Africa, land of the word and talk. Africa, land of ceremonies and festivities. Africa, land of rhythm and dance. Africa, land of the living drum. Deep in the bush of Burkina Faso, the drum is a sacred instrument, surrounded by taboos and mystery. It takes on endless shapes and performs many functions, replacing the human voice in recounting the history of individuals and even of whole peoples. It carries the news. It confers praise and speaks to the world beyond when it isn't simply rhythming a dance. But the world is changing. Today, a younger generation looking for adventure and recognition is bringing the drum out of its secret universe, turning it away from its ancient functions, and sometimes reshaping it to be displayed in the neo-African shop window. Most African drums can speak, but depending on their morphology, they're more or less able to deliver a discourse. Unquestionably, the king of speaking drums is found in the shape of an hourglass. Its form and system of lacing let the drummer vary the tension of the skin and thus the tone over a large range. Most sub-Saharan languages are tonal, that is, the same phonem can have several meanings depending on height of the tone in which it is pronounced. So, the drum reproduces all or some of the tonal range of vowels and consonants. In societies stemming from the Mond people, it is the griots who safeguard knowledge of their people's history and of villages and families. And though they most often voice these remembrances, they can also express them with drums. Rio lived by the gift of the word. Both flattered and feared, they miss no occasion to praise those who possess power or money. <laughs> In societies that practice a spirit religion, drums are sometimes useful in communicating with spirit beings. This drummer is invoking the protector of the village community, to whom it has been decided an offering is to be made. What the drum is saying is secret. It's known only to the practitioners. If African literature is conveyed largely by word of mouth, some is spread by drums or even by xylophones. The uninitiated, even African, will hear only a rhythmic and melodic confusion. But those in the know will hear texts of most beautiful literature, one often interspersed with metaphors, making it difficult to understand. The texts may speak of administrative districts or politicians in office, notable personalities, people who have made a mark on their times, or age-old stories 
sometimes going back thousands of years. In order to speak, a drum must emit at least two different and distinct sounds. On this instrument, in the shape of a gourd, the drummer achieves this by beating either in the center or on the side, or by changing the way that he strikes the skin. Certain drums or groups of drums are intended for precise rituals. Among the lobby, this group of three drums is brought out only once every seven years for the great Dayoro initiation, unless an old initiate dies and they wish to honor him with this exceptional rhythm. As soon as the initiation period is opened, the drummed knowledge of this rhythm and its practice is begun by all generations of men. Among the Gan people, one of the last kingdoms of Burkina Faso, the big conical drum, the koto, is sacred, and shown the same respect as to a human being. Its making requires animal sacrifices, the land that is stripped for it, and the tree that is cut down. Once completed, it is given a drink of millet seed and water, as traditionally served to welcome strangers. Then it is given a name, respecting the same ritual as that performed for a newborn child. And finally, they seek to discover the spiritual entity that will protect it throughout its life. The spirit, in turn, also receives an offering. Before the drum is used, permission is requested from its spiritual protector through divination. Permission is granted with no condition or with an additional sacrifice being asked. In the past, making the royal gan drum required a ceremony of magic. An open end of the drum was exposed to smoke from a fire burning the throat of a lion and wood from a tree that made an exceptional noise when felled. Then once a year it was offered a human sacrifice. It is said that this drum could be heard 30 miles away. At the time of French colonization, such was its reputation for magic and power. The frightened authorities confiscated the royal gan drum and buried it, and ever since the kingdom has replaced it with this array of drums, but there is not the same power or sacredness. In traditional societies, it is rare for women to be allowed to beat drums with stretched animal skins. They have to content themselves with beating on ordinary calabashes borrowed from their kitchens. Or even better, on a water drum, which can also produce a deep sound. With this drum, they find encouragement in, for example, shelling she-nuts, a long and painful task. It's always better to do this work joyously and in groups.
But times are changing. Certain of the old drums have lost their sacred attributes, and new instruments come along. There is notably the new king of drums, the djembe, that has conquered the youth of both Africa and the West. African djembe players, the famous djembe fola, fascinate listeners with their virtuosity, aura, and charisma. Every year, thousands of young people leave Europe, America, and Japan to go to study the music and techniques of the djembe. In Mali, Burkina Faso, Senegal, and Guinea, and returning home, many of them will in turn teach the rudiments of this modernized African music. Djembe is played mainly in cities. Nevertheless, in rural Christian and Islamic communities, it is sometimes used as the drum accompanying spirit cults that had fallen into disuse when the religion of the book was imposed. Now the djembe is played at baptisms and weddings, or for the last flickering remnants of ancient rites as here in this Muslim village. The djembe is a product of pure craftsmanship. Its body is pierced by a blacksmith who also makes the mortars and seating. Its acoustic characteristics may depend on the variety of wood used, its exact shape, and the quality of goatskin, but there is still a mystery as to what it will sound like when it's finished. The clarity of a djembe's tone is achieved by using pre-stretched nylon strings which can maintain the skin tighter than can be done with leather thongs. It is application of this technology that makes the djembe different from any other drum. It has a voice with a wide tonal range that lets it speak, as well as enormous power of sound. At Bobo di Olasso, Burkina Faso's second city, djembes are found everywhere. From morning till night, the drumming resonates through the city. Cabarets are the best open public places to hear them. And there they drink millet beer, the authentic friendly glass in Burkina Faso. Owners hire musicians by the day to attract customers. But sometimes the djembe has to take second place to the balafon.
what interests African youth goes far beyond playing the djembe as a part-time musician in a cabaret. Their ambition is to achieve a national reputation, or African, or even international. But the competition is fierce. There are thousands of musicians seeking the same adventure and rewards and recognition. That is why they practice all the time, hoping one day to land that special contract leading to the whole world and to fame. Over the past decades, only the griots were allowed to play music in Monde society, but now that's no longer true. Others can hold such a position and have a career. Among musicians of the new generation, Tairu Djembe is probably one of the most brilliant percussionists in Burkina Faso. Still, nothing predisposed him to such a career. I learned the djembe by drumming on tin cans. Back then, there was only one good djembe player, Baba Kuyate. Here in Bobo Diolasso, he was number one. My father didn't approve of my playing it. But the djembe became popular. So I took this path. I started with a kenkeni before starting the solo dundu. Then I went to Ivory Coast. Finally, when I came back to Burkina, I dropped the solo dundu and concentrated on the solo djembe. The djembe was made popular in the West during the 80s by a generation of musicians like Adama Drame, Mamadi Kaita, and the brothers Koulibaly. Most of these great musicians travel the world playing in concert halls and at festivals. Today, young players are trying to follow in their footsteps, but they realize there's no point in trying to imitate them. They have to devise their own way of playing, create original groups, compose new pieces. Musically, nothing is frozen. The variety of occasions to play goes hand in hand with different ways of interpreting basic rhythms, fitting the occasion, whether a festival, a concert, or a recording. Every group in every city and country is trying to stamp its own individuality by developing its own brand of music. I think that here in Burkina, we are very quick to play rhythms. We don't play the same way that they used to. Adam Adrame plays the djembe in the old way. But now the new generation has gone beyond that way of playing. City musicians look to the countryside for their inspiration. The rural, traditional music. Arranging rhythms and chants adapting them to the actual young people for whom they are now playing. The thing I would like to say about the music is that the village music doesn't fit our reality anymore. What concerned people in the bush in the past will not do. Our lives today are different. We have to bring about certain changes so that we reach the young ones that we are playing for. To do this, we try to adapt the musical heritage of our ancestors to our own ideas.
musicians hold forth by performing at regular calendar festivals and baptisms and weddings. It's an opportunity for them to accompany dancers who themselves create innovations, drawing inspiration from folkloric ballets. And some of these dancers are also members of traditional groups. environments, rhythms coming from all over West Africa meet and blend together. Just as with the fading away of the sacred meaning of drums, so the traditional obligations and taboos linked to each rhythm and dance are also eclipsed. The Burkina Faso people are perhaps trying to exorcise the taboos that still weigh on their society, and in this way advance into the present day with their spirits freed from the constraints of other times. It is at locally organized concerts that the musicians can display their virtuosity. Gauge just how much they are adored by the crowds. And for the dancers, it's a chance to be accompanied by the great ones. It also affords up-and-coming musicians a chance to perform in public. Maybe one day they too will be given the chance to travel to the West that so fascinates African youth. Percussion groups integrate drums from a variety of Burkina Faso's ethnic backgrounds. Drums that lose their traditional function the instant they enter the city. But there they find a new identity that carries them to the four corners of the world, representing the spirit of this Africa that displays more than anywhere else the meeting of tradition and change. Everything is becoming modern so quickly. We never stop learning. There is still a lot to do. Some people think that music has boundaries, but music has no borders. We are always learning.